Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. My talk today focuses on what I call the million dollar Model 3 and the fact that uh, those first 30 cars that will be distributed on July 28th could be worth as much as a million dollars a piece. Bonjour, we get to stay stuff in Moscow by name Stars and Chain. Nihao Ma, Bonjourno, Guten Tag. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Um, one of the things I was fascinated by is that there's been a huge emphasis by most of the papers regarding the interior or the screen or the exterior of the new Model 3. What I'm fascinated by is the fact that the decisions that have been made regarding the battery pack for the Model 3 will, I believe, be the standard for uh, the EV or electric uh, market, both in trucks with the semi as well as in cars, for definitely the next five years, but possibly the next 10 years. So, as a result of this, um, you know, I, I remember reading that, for example, with the Model X, one of the U.S. major auto companies actually paid double uh, the sticker price to get a fully loaded Model X shipped to Detroit so it could be dismantled and studied uh, by the engineering teams in Detroit. What I'm fascinated by here with the Model 3 and why it's a million dollars is that um, Tesla has likely spent between 50 and 100 million dollars in research um, on the battery and battery pack here and not only is it a question of what's going on with uh, the battery um, in terms of uh, cutting it in half and looking at all the properties of it and incorporating that in uh, the products being uh, delivered for new companies there's also a question mark of how is this configured? Are the batteries sitting side by side, laying down? Are they standing up? You know, the height of the floor of the vehicle will tell you what the answer is to this. And then what are the uh, temperature management system processes in terms of how is this battery managed for heat and cold? Um, and, you know, the replication of, of this or copying of this to be used by competitors. So I found it fascinating because Elon Musk has definitely got the patents out there. Um, but you know the, the true performance parameters of the new battery um, have really not been carefully studied by anybody in real time. And Tesla's process of delaying uh, the delivery of the vehicle, et cetera, means that uh, it just puts a huge emphasis on, you know, is it as good as advertised? Is it bad? Does it have um, attributes that competitors can exploit uh, as they develop their own technology? The um, industry is still chasing the old battery that is in the Model X and Model S. And so, if you're building out your, your factory and trying to incorporate the attributes of that old battery as you're delivering your product, do you now, uh, are you pretty much okay with sticking with that battery or do you now need to retool to address chemistry, structure, size, everything associated with the new battery? So again, those answers will probably start showing up uh, a month after uh, we actually see consumers getting those because I think competitors around the world will start, uh, you know, in the aftermarket purchasing uh, those Model 3s at very high markups in order to, to have uh, that solution in. I threw out there a million dollars as a possible uh, number because there aren't that many cars that will be out there. And the way these uh, vehicles are being delivered in smaller quantities over time, I think suggests that um, you could, you know, three months is not that long a time on a calendar, but three months in time to reverse engineer and then um,
develop your response to what Tesla is doing and then put that, start building that into your manufacturing process, um, you know, could be a reasonable amount of time with, you know, <clears throat> with billions of dollars worth of sales for your organization behind that situation, uh, spending a million dollars or whatever those first 30 users might want for their vehicles is not out of line. Um, the next time I wanted to cover on this is the fact that um, it's, you know, I, I w recently watched a video of Elon Musk and he was talking about uh, the challenges small companies have in emerging. Um, hence, it was sort of a focus on subsidies that have been enjoyed by Tesla and whether or not it's a good idea for uh, uh, municipalities, be it states or cities, to uh, extend those uh, um, those benefits, and he sort of talked about the fact that small companies are like saplings that are kind of starting up, that are battling redwoods. So having some assist is not a bad idea if you want uh, to see innovation and uh, solutions arrive that help generate progress. Um, so I'm sort of intrigued because um, one of the process rules of Silicon Valley is usually that the very big companies are the one chasing, um, the, the, the small companies chase the big companies because of all the resource differences and so forth that are going on. In this case, as we all know, Tesla is sort of leading the curve in the electric car space. And uh, the competitors in the form of the huge firms are chasing Tesla, which is obviously a strange phenomenon for companies uh, of the size of GM or BMW or Mercedes or any of the big guys that are out there. Um, I'm also, you know, wanted to tack on to this discussion a little bit of uh, what I call, um, or what's called the halo effect. So if you think about Apple and how it sort of built its universe of products and then customers being comfortable with all the other ways in which they can leverage their Apple products. Um, I was kind of intrigued by the fact that um, as you get into the sort of Tesla universe, particularly for early adopters, I can see it in my responses, et cetera. Uh, one of the things that's sort of lurking as a question mark is if you stay within this Tesla universe, you get access to the supercharger network you also get access to um, other products, you know, like um, uh, the Powerwall, as well as their plug-in vehicle, as well as um, if you have solar panels or a solar roof that interact to the Powerwall. So there are all these network effects that are lurking for Tesla that definitely gives it a competitive advantage over a lot of other companies because of the number of different ways that you know, customers are benefiting from the interaction. Um, I have to admit I was a little surprised when I did my post uh, a couple of days ago regarding um, it being possibly cheaper to use natural gas versus solar to address um, uh, your backup power needs, especially because if you charge something uh, and it's 14 kW, it'll definitely work overnight but it doesn't give you long term what if power is out for one or two or three weeks. Yes, you can use your solar panels to fuel up, but it'd be a lot easier if you have your natural gas you know, to work with. So I was really impressed by responses from consumers or viewers that were discussing the fact that they were deliberately um, trying to focus all their energies on a Tesla solution because of how efficient it is and the degree to which it reaches across uh, a whole range of, um, of sort of touch points um, that re re represent a complete solution. So kudos to those users that want to do that. The impact of using solar to power up and powering up your vehicle in that manner, I think is impressive. And um, I think it's good for the planet not everybody has the resources to participate in that party, um, but there's a great deal of credit deserved. So to close out again, um, I'm reviewing the fact that I believe the first set of Teslas that come out are worth 
a million dollars a piece only because there are a number of competitors, be it auto companies or battery producers, that are compelled to respond to, to test a competitive threat uh, in a timely fashion and by reverse engineering these cars in every aspect, particularly the battery pack and its construct, they save themselves millions of dollars of time and money development uh, by doing so. So, it, you know, uh, those folks are pretty lucky to be in that position. Congratulations. I do think, though, that uh, what it, they find and everybody else finds uh, from the Tesla solution will represent, you know, what the future looks like in the industry for many years to come. And I'm confident that that solution will be impressive uh, once, uh, you know, it's, it's truly sort of uh, reviewed. Once again, thank you for taking time out to view us on Tesla Fan Insight. This is Greg. Tschüss, max gut, au revoir, tout à l'heure, le hydro haut. Salam alaikum, and have a great day. Please like and subscribe. Any comments would be appreciated.